Okay, this dude dances around at the same instant. The idea, because the true identity, matter, but identity no space, of space, where would you put it? That's true. If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? Okay. You can have empty space by itself with no matter in it. And you can't time empty space because it has no beginning and no end. All right? He dances around this fact. You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. Wrong. You can have infinite space without any matter in it. But there is micro-fundamental matter that's still there that we cannot see. We see this in Hadron Colliders. We see a microverse, okay? But we can't see it in space. If we had a micro-electron telescope and we pointed it into space, we'd probably be able to see this stuff. But there's still energy in space, Heisenberg energy, the empty zero-point energy. Sleep. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. That's bogus. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth. Okay, this means that basically the universe created the heavens and the earth from this God particle. All right? This God particle came from this Heisenberg energy, which the universe created. This is microprotoplasma. There's matter. So you have time, space, matter created a trinity of trinities there. Just... First you have space, then you have matter, then you have time. Time is the last one. That's why it's this illusion. That's why there's so many paradoxes about time that we have, like time being an illusion. Okay? Technically it is an illusion. It doesn't exist when you have infinite void space. It only exists after the Big Bang. That's when time starts. Okay? Time was the last thing to come into existence. The thing is, they keep th this is why their math keeps getting thrown off. This is why all of their fundamentals keep making no sense. Because they're trying to say, well, all of them had to come in existence at the same time. None of them can exist by themselves. Time and matter cannot exist independently of each other. But space can. You know, time is past, present, and future. <coughs> Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously, and the God who created them has to be outside of them. That's bogus, okay? The space itself, or the universe, does not have to be outside itself, okay? All it has to do is just be empty space with E equals MC squared. All of that micro-fundamental protoplasma is energy. All of that micro matter, all of those quarks, all of that, all those leptons, all of that is energy. And that can form a particle, a gigantic particle, what we call the God particle. It's huge, but in relative to infinite static space, it's only a little dot. See what I'm saying? Relativity does not apply. It, it only applies on an infinite scale. Therefore, any fundamental measurements that you have are irrelevant. Okay? It could be huge, but it's really tiny. It can last billions of years, but in, in static infinite space, those billions of years are only a split second. See what I'm saying? Our God particle, they say, oh, it existed only a split second. That's probably true. Okay? But that's only on our fundamental level. Whenever you consider its fundamental level, it probably had a stellar lifetime. Them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who the created this computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for and the, the concept that a, a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then, I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that formed by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So... Uh, That's true, though. I, your, your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God. And that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping, that's for certain. So that's the God that I worship. Thank you. So technically, God is the universe, okay? He danced around that. Now, he might believe in God and all that, but he knows what the universe... He knows, he knows what God is or who God is or the identity of God, the nature of God, and he dances around it, okay? He's just not saying it. He's not saying, well... God is the universe, okay? Because he, he believes in the Trinity, but the thing is, if he says it's the universe, then that makes him a pantheist. That labels him, all right? That's where people 
keep screwing up. They keep getting these labels. They keep thinking that one has to be right and the other has to be wrong. When both of them can actually have some of the truth. See what I'm saying? This one be 0 .50 right. This one be 0 .50 right. What do you got? 1.0. There's the truth right there, you know. I mean, a trinity would be literally the universe, an evolved being, and a hybrid being. Okay, that would be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, what is a whole? A whole is an empty space. Okay, a holy ghost. What is a ghost? A ghost. It has no form or gender. That's the universe. Okay, the holy ghost. All right, the word of God. Okay, the word God. This is what the word of God is. They've taken the word of God. Man. Oh, it's the Bible. It's the word of God. No, no, the word God. G O D. God. Just the word itself is a word. Okay, and it has a definition. The definition is omnipresence, created everything, time doesn't apply to it, yada, 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 all these, fundam all these fundamental things that would think, oh my God, that's, that's impossible. But it's not impossible if it's the universe. See what I'm saying? The universe is always around us. The universe created everything. You know, people complicate things. If you have just a word, God, and a definition, and the definition is the universe, then that's what that means. Holy Ghost is the universe. That's what that means. It's a whole, empty space. It's a ghost, has no form. See? People complicate things. The Zoroastrians believe that there were two cosmic forces. This is true. This is quarks and leptons. Okay? This is where the original original religion came from. It, it, was, it wasn't even a religion. It was an idea. It was a scientific idea. It was a quantum idea. They probably knew more because they were closer to the ancients that actually knew this stuff. Okay? They, they, they didn't have some belief structure out of it. They had an idea. They knew quantum physics. They knew what was going on. And that was their idea behind it. That was their belief behind it. But it wasn't a belief structure, you know. It was just, well, like 2 plus 2 is 4. That's what I believe because I know it's true, okay. This is what they knew is true, you know. This was what they knew. They knew there were quarks and leptons, two forces in the universe, positive and negative, alpha and omega. We know this is true too. Science does not want to let anybody know this, but this is true. You can find it out for yourself. If you know anything about quantum chronodynamics, you'll know this is true. If you know anything about physics or cosmology, you'll know this is true. Quarks and leptons. First generation of matter. They existed forever. There's always infinite static space. 